One of the most important changes is happening to Hearthstone Mercenaries as I am making this video. They are rolling out a hotfix that is going to drastically change the PvP landscape. You need to make sure you're aware of this, so let's get right into it. And I'm a doctor! Before I get right into it though, I know a lot of people are going to ask me, Raren, where is my five packs that Papa Blizzard promised me today? And the answer is, I have no idea, but looking at the Twitter thread where they posted the uh, update the hotfix. It looks like it will be here at some point. They are aware of it. Deck Tech does work for Blizzard, so they are aware of it and still planning to doing that. I have no idea. I don't work for Blizzard. The hotfix we're talking about is right here. Cute abilities without targets will no longer still occur on the same turn that a mercenary has been killed and reincarnated and or resurrected. This is a very big change because this just affects Karen and Karen alone, which is one of the most popular mercenaries in the game. And you may not think this change is huge, but we're about to get into why this is gonna drastically change the landscape of PVP in general. But the other really important one here is the Blink Fox one. If you did not know, the way Blink Fox is currently working is that with the 10th tail equipment, the first ability you get when you bring Blink Fox out is the last ability that your opponent played on the very first turn. But currently, when it's bugged, it was getting the same ability twice rather than getting refreshed with the new ability that your opponent used on the previous turn. Now that is fixed, which means Blink Fox is completely okay. Just kidding, the bug is not resolved yet and scheduled for a later date. So be a little cautious on Blink Fox. May not actually be here for a little bit, but it's important to know that they are working on it. And I guarantee as they get through this week, they'll probably be fixing Blink Fox later or probably early next week, I would have to guess. But let's go into why this Karen change is so freaking important. Only if you did not know, with Karen's reincarnation, this says the first time this mercenary dies, return it to life at 40 health. What this means is if you kill Karen before they actually use their ability, they still get to use that ability. So they sometimes get the Earth Stomp you, they get to use their Endurance Aura, they get to Ancestral Uppercut you. It doesn't matter what Karen's doing, he gets to do it. This is a problem because technically if the mercenary died, they should not have an ability queued. And that is how the interaction was supposed to be intended from the beginning. But we know it's Hearthstone, ha 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 ha, indie company. But this is a really big change. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say to themselves, this is a nerf, where's my coins? What the hell is going on here? Technically speaking, and I know people are going to disagree with me, this is not a nerf, it's just changing an interaction that should have been like this from the start of the game. Now, does this mean Karen is a bad mercenary? Does this mean I wasted all my time making Karen a good character and maxing up his abilities? No. Karen is still going to be a fantastic mercenary, just won't be tier S anymore. If I have to take a guess, he's probably going to be high tier A, because speed manipulation is still very good. But the reason why this change is so important is because now there is more counterplay to Karen and Diablo. Karen's best friend, tag team, whatever you want to call him, is Diablo. And the reason of that is because Fire Stomp is really good with Karen. Basically, the idea is you go with the Earth Stomp the turn before, and then you do Endurance Aura into the Fire Stomp, and you basically do an absolute crap load of damage to casters and everyone around him. And this is a very bread and butter idea. People have been using this quite a bit. But one of the problems with this combination is that you can't really focus Karen to stop him to make sure like his reincarnation doesn't actually proc an ability because if you focus Karen, he's still gonna get it off. It does not matter. Now, you do have more counterplay to this because let's say Karen's at a pretty low life total. You focus Karen, he can no longer get his Earth Stomp off to prep him for the next turn. And that makes Diablo just a slightly weaker character as well. Is Diablo gonna be still tier S? I'm not 100% sure. He's still good with a lot of other characters. But is he going to get worse? Absolutely. And this makes the landscape of PvP so much more awesome and so much more unique. We're no, no longer going to just see like Karen Diablo in almost every single comp. The amount of flexibility there now is because you can actually focus Karen down is pretty great. Let's put this in here. If this makes a huge impact on the metagame, expect a tier list very soon talking about how the changes affected the metagame and what characters rise up and what characters get lowered. Just make sure you're subscribed in case you don't want to miss that. Now you're probably asking yourself, Raren, what can I use to close out games now? How do I win games without Karen Diablo? That's all I know. I'm five years old and I don't know anything. It's okay. I got you. First and foremost, I want I want to do mention this because this is going to be truth. Karen and Diablo are both going to be still be played. It's not like they're garbage. They're, they're tier A probably at least. High tier A, still maybe a tier S. They will still be played no matter what. So if you max these characters and you level them, don't be worried. They'll still be played. You could still play them today. They'll do fine. Actually, they'll probably do fantastic. But I'm just going to showcase a couple other things you could try doing if you want to try some new 
awesome comps out against Karen in Diablo. This is the orc comp. I posted a YouTube video of this earlier today, so definitely go watch this if you're interested in this comp. Spoiler, this comp is amazing. And the main idea of this comp is to basically use Gul'dan, Garrosh, and Saurfang as your closer. Gul'dan, using the Amulet of Souls, restores 32 life if you hit this against the Protector to all your orcs on the battlefield. Did you know Garrosh is an orc? And did you know Saurfang is an orc? It's a lot of healing. And on top of that, Garrosh gets a lot of life because of Tusk of Manoroth plus Horde Strength. 18 health per character is insane, and you use that every other turn. And with the sustain of Gul'dan, it just makes your sustain insane. Like, you, it, you can't kill these two. They're like raid bosses. And then Saurfang also helps out with this, with the mobilizing strike, because you just give your damage orcs plus three, plus five. It's great. And if you do have the Stompers, highly recommend using it because it'll make your team comp even more frustrating to deal with. But that's not the only comp you can use. There's multiple. Let's get to it. This is one of the closers I use for a comp that's coming out tomorrow on YouTube. So get ready for this. This is one of the coolest builds I've played in a while. I don't want to spoil it, though. But the main idea of this is to use Sylvanas and Samaro. Now, Samaro uses the Sash of Illusion with Mirror Images. And if you did not know this, this actually works with Reclaim Souls on Sylvanas because it counts as a character dying, which means just from one Mirror Entity, you get 10 more attack on Reclaim Souls. And that's not inc including the fact that you could do this multiple times. And if Blade Master Samaro dies, that's also another plus five attack. So we're doing pretty great. Pair that with Death Volley, making sure that every single character in the game on their side just gets damaged by Sylvanas and it does deal double damage to casters is pretty great. Sylvanas is a really good finisher right now and she will only get better with this interaction change. I'm pretty stoked for Sylvanas and I hope you guys are excited for the gameplay tomorrow because it's pretty great. Speaking of one of the best finishers in the game, you have Shadow. If you want to start off with Beast, this is fantastic and then you slowly transition into Shadow and Brukan as a finisher. The benefit of using Brukan is that Lightning Rod, just on his own, does an insane amount of damage to Protectors. So if you see a lot of Protectors that are trying to close out games like Garrosh or Malfurion, you could just use Chain Lightning and just absolutely destroy them. Natalie and Vol'jin are both very good closers as well because Vol'jin makes Shadow super fast. He has got insane AoE and Natalie just helps with that whole equation. Just do extra damage and they do a very good job at closing out games because they just get under Protectors so quickly. And even against fighters, they do do a lot of damage. So it's just a really good closer to have. A fantastic comp you could be trying out is Cookie, Sylvanas, and Anduin. Now, this comp might be a little too picante for some of you guys, but this is a pretty good comp. And the reason why this is so cool is because, A, we've already talked about Sylvanas, but she works really well with Mucklesburg Brother because it's another body that dies for Reclaimed Souls. Cookie is great because of the extra life, but on top of that, Go Fish is just great in a comp that, you know, wants some buffs. Fish Feast is great to get some extra life on your characters in the board, but having the extra nine life is actually fantastic because it makes your Anduin so annoying to kill later in the game. The general idea of this is to start with Malfurion and Samaro, but Anduin could come in and just be an absolute monster because he's so frustrating to kill at some points. It's important to use Ring of Purity here because you want your Anduin to get as big as possible, but paired with Sylvanas and Cookie, or just basically, even if Malfurion lives, it's absolutely disgusting how good Anduin can really be. I'm super excited about this change. I hope you guys are excited too. Expect some awesome videos coming out shortly, and I can't wait to see what the metagame is like for this. If you enjoyed this, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.